Hey guys, welcome. Um, welcome to Artistic License, my stream where we do whatever I want on Thursday, starting around 6.30ish. Um, today we are actually going to do a manicure. Yes, yes, Laura, exactly. We are gonna do nails today. Um, but before we do, I'm, I'm curious if you guys that are here, my early birds, notice anything interesting, maybe um, a certain color here or or a certain color here. Can y'all see that reflected on my hands? Um, I have to shout out a big, big thank you to Naomi who um, purchased these lights for me that I've had on my wish list for a while. And now I can do like super fancy light colors. And I just wanna show y'all little message, um, the little gift message that she included. I had to mark out her name, so I'm just making sure it's really not legible. It's not legible. Um, and I and I spilled water on this because I'm a freaking mess. So I'm sorry it's a little wrinkled, but hopefully it'll still it'll still like focus. Yeah, there we go. So she says, "Pretty lights, I love you and your channel." Oh my gosh, we're focused for a second. Anyway, it says, "Yes, pretty lights, <laughs> I love you and your channel. Enjoy." And then from and then that's her name that y'all can't read there. It didn't really focus. Whatever, you're supposed to have autofocus. Anyway, so let me show y'all some stuff that I can do with this. Okay, I have I'm so many fun settings, right? Like, um, we can go, we can go to an enchanted forest, right? We can go, oh, we can go under the sea. <sighs> we can go to hell. Um, and I can make the colors like change. Oh, thank you so much, Lar. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is, you know, appropriate. I got this as a little early Christmas gift right here from um, from the hubby. So of course I had to bring him and my um, vision back, you know, that I retired a long time ago. And uh, and we're gonna celebrate the, the Pokemon today as well. So y'all can see like the lights are changing as I'm talking. <gasps> hey, Ty, so glad you can make it. Um, so yeah, huge, huge thank you to Naomi for, for the lights. Um, I'm going to be doing some really fun stuff with them. So I'm really excited to kind of, uh, add that aspect to, to how I'm filming. Oh, Hey Cass. So happy to see you back again. Um, okay. So let me, let me set them back to how I actually want them. So we're going to be, we're going to be real pink for a second and I got to get up. So the, because they work with a remote, I can't do them individually. So what I do is like, I can turn them pink, but I can turn that pink one off right? And then I can change them and like turn them off and, and do it like that. So y'all aren't going to see me for a second, but I'm still here. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Now we're back to the cool lighting. So um, Naomi got this off of my Amazon wish list. So I would love to show you guys my wish list. I don't advertise this a huge amount, but you can find it underneath all of my YouTube videos. Oh, that is the landing cam. Go away. Okay. Um, Y'all can find it underneath all of my YouTube videos. And this is just like some, some stuff to help out the channel if you're interested. Um, I went in because I forgot about it. <laughs> I totally forgot about it until Naomi messaged me asking if it was up to date, right? And it wasn't. So I went and added some fun stuff to it, right, that um, that I thought would be interesting for the channel. But it's really mostly about like things that that I would use um, that would, you know, that would support the channel, right? So if y'all do get things on here, like I'll keep it updated. I'll try to do, be able to do a little bit better, do a little bit better about that. But that is my Amazon wish list. I'll put a link in the chat because I don't think... I don't think I actually have it linked on my Twitch, which I should probably fix that. Um, there we go. Uh, but I do have it linked underneath all of the spare room episodes on YouTube. Okay, let's go back here. Fix. Didn't mean to drag you away. Go back up there, counter. Okay. Go. All right, so so big big thank you to Naomi. Um, thank you so much for for checking out my wish list and, and getting me something off of there. And that's how you guys can do that as well if you are interested. Okay, so next, of course, we like to start with talking about uh, the yesterday's episode of Spare Room. And I have to say, 
This one um, was a little bit more popular than I thought. Like, I, I know that when I talk about something a little bit controversial, like the one from last week about competition, um, <laughs> right? Lar, like everybody needs those cat ears for real. Um, so when I talk about something a little bit controversial, like the competition episode last week, I, I kind of half expect to get a little bit more. Um, I kind of wasn't expecting this, but but now that I saw like the response to it, I I totally understand. Like this is something that I think connected both with newer RPers on a level and also with um, with our peers that have been at it for a while. Because when you're newer, I think there is like a wonder of like, well, why don't people seem to like my characters? Why aren't they engaging with them as much as they're engaging with other people? And da 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 da. da. So it's like how to actually make a character that is good and role playable, right? But then I think it connected with more experienced RPers as well, because we all know what it's like to try to role play with that dude that just like, you know, it like grunts like, um, like, uh, what's his name? Geralt in, um, in The Witcher. And you, you can't have a conversation with them. And you're like, this is boring. And, um, and then you end up with all of the things that happen uh, in regards to that. So I think that the, the point of making this video was to help people understand that at the end of the day, if you can't make two characters talk to each other, then it's not a role play. Like no one's gonna care. No one cares how powerful or how cool or how sexy your character is if you can't get two characters to talk to each other, right? And I think there are certain kinds of characters that are harder to do that with, right? And so, um, and so I think it's worth taking into account if you've chosen that type of character. Uh, Cass is saying, you mean people don't find me cool when I brood in the corner of the tavern? No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, nobody cares. I mean, if you want to brood in the corner of, of the tavern, you go for it, but don't expect anyone to come talk to you, right? Um, so I think this, this video, this video surprised me a little bit, but I think it was one of those, one of those things that, uh, that is very obvious to those of us that have been role playing for a while. Um, so it was relatable in that way. And then it's, it's very confusing to someone who's just started because they see like what characters are considered really cool in like movies and in books and in TV shows and things like that. And they're wondering like, this character is so popular in this TV show. Why when I try to do a role play as the same exact type of character, does it not work out? And to, to the rest of us, it, it's obvious, but to them, it's, it's really not. So I think that's why... Um, I think that's why this video uh, got so many clicks and 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 got a you know a bit more comments than than typical. Um, what about if I sit in a tree and watch people come to school? Yeah, I mean you're welcome to. No one's no one's gonna look up, right? <laughs> I think we know that. We know that, right? <clears throat> okay. So that's what I kind of had to say as my wrap up about that video. I didn't really have too many additional comments on it. I don't think there was anything that I really forgot to say that I wanted to say. Um, or, or things like that. I think it did, you know, it's, it's a topic that's easy for us that have been role playing for a while, right? Okay, so before we actually get into the, um, I'm going to change the cameras and stuff around y'all will see. Before we actually get into the nails, I just want to show you guys. I just want to show you guys. I'm sure you clocked. I've got like some pink polishes here, right? I just want to show y'all. You'll crack me up, okay? Like, you clearly know me so well and love me so much, or maybe you just like all the same things that I do. I don't know. Okay, but here we go. I put, I, I asked for y'all to vote, right? I asked for y'all to vote. And if you look at these pie charts, this is pink, right? And this is glitter. It was even worse before I posted it this morning and told people that didn't want pink glitter to speak up. <laughs> It's still like, still, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. There was so many of y'all like here, let me show you the individual responses. Pink glitter. Pink glitter. Purple glitter. Orange creme. I know, I'm sorry, we're not gonna do a Thanksgiving or fall manicure cast. I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed as well. If I wasn't doing this stream, I would. But, um, you know, <laughs> the people have spoken. They have spoken. All right, pink glitter. Pink glitter. Blue shiny. Um, wouldn't mind this. Uh, you know, not mad at this choice. Uh, but I am kind of glad that this isn't. This didn't win because blue stains like crazy. Uh, pink glitter again. Pink creme. Okay, a little, little bit different. Black creme. I mean, 
I'm for it, but this was the only person that voted that. Uh, purple metallic. Uh, I, I love this choice, but just it just didn't get a lot of votes. Purple cram. Okay. So a lot of purple lovers too in the audience. And then blue metallic, another blue metallic. Uh, purple creme. And I think, yeah, and that's it. So, um, so y'all love some pink and some purple. Y'all love some pink and some purple, which is great. I mean, those are great colors, right? Okay. So with all that being said, let me shift my screen around a little bit. And then we will change our settings so that you guys can see my nails. Let's scoot this over. And I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit more than that. And go. A little bit more. Okay. Look. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. First thing we are going to do. Yes, Kendra. Oh my gosh. Can you see like it's like kind of blue here and um and pink here? I think you missed the little intro. Uh, so, okay, so here's what we're doing. This camera right here, this is my old crappy camera. <clears throat> That's why I don't look so good, and I looked real good a second ago. But of course, we have the nice camera on my nails. Okay, so let's um, let's get started. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is get our nail oil. So I use this jojoba oil you can get actual nail oils right like nail oils that are um, specific for nails but i have found that pure jojoba oil works just as good got this tip from um from christine from simply nail logical um love it and and you can get like big jars of this on amazon and i bought this like a year and a half ago i think maybe two years ago now i don't know a long time okay and speaking of that i actually want to show you guys so I don't, I don't know how to do nails professionally. Like I don't, I don't know anything about that, right? Every single thing I learned about doing my nails, I learned on YouTube. So I'm just gonna put in the chat here. I think, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna put in the chat here all of the nail channels that I used to watch that taught me all of this stuff, but it's simply Nail, nail Logical, Nail Career Education, Kelly Marissa, Cute Polish, and Robin Moses. Now, Robin Moses, um, both, and Simply Nail Logical don't really do nail videos currently, so I, um, I hesitate to recommend those as far as, like, watching their new stuff, but you can totally look through their archives and find, like, a whole bunch of awesome videos. Okay, here's what we're going to do first. We're going to do first. Eliza decided the floor was supposed to be all popcorn. Oh, oh gosh, I understand, Kendra. <laughs> I understand. Okay, so here's what we're doing right now. I'm gonna make sure I keep my hands in frame. Um, so I'm putting this nail oil on, get them nice and oiled up, because I use a peel-off base coat, right? I use a peel-off base coat. So we're gonna pop all of these peelies right off, just like Simply Nail Logical does her videos when she did nail art okay, so let's so I got this metal tool I'm gonna use it again in a minute but I just run it all the way to the end right here and sometimes peelies don't come off super nice like you can see a big crack in this one but sometimes they come off real good so it just depends right that one What? Oh my god. Yeah, Kendra, you've not ever seen peel-off base coats before? They are the freaking best. And then I don't have to, like, get too much acetone going on my fingers, um, which dries, I mean, it dries them out, it damages the nails, and, like, I'm not super, super good at taking care of my nails, so, like, anything to lessen the amount of damage is good for me, right? Because I'm not super gentle. That peely did not come off very well. So 
So my nail probably has some damage right there, and that's why the peely's not coming off so well. That would be my guess, right? Yeah, Kendra, I'll show I'll show you when we get to actually like painting the peel off base coat on. I'll go into some more detail on like the brand that I use and um and why I like them so much. But there are lots of peel off different peel off base coats you can get. Yeah, I've definitely got some damage on this. Staying in frame. Face is not. That's okay. I don't need to see my face too much for this. That one's not really good at all. So the oil, part of what the oil does for the peel off base coat makes it easier to peel them off because it gets up under there. It's up under that peel off base coat there, so but it can pop off a little bit easier. So I can peel that off without damaging my nail. Obviously, if you did this with like regular old nail polish, right? Not with a peel off base coat, you're gonna really hurt your nails when you chip and peel the polish off. So don't do that unless you're using a peel off base, right? You can't do that. And another thing that I'm doing that's that contributes to some of my nail damage is I'm using this metal tool, right? Because it's easier and faster <laughs> is the truth. And nails grow back, so like it's okay. Um, but if you want to avoid some of some of that, right? Some of what I'm doing here and be a little bit gentler on your nails. You can use those like orange wood sticks, you know, like those um, those wooden ones, and they have like the beveled edge or not beveled, angular edge, I think is what the word I'm looking for. So you can do that. And it's a lot gentler and you're less likely to really screw up your nails and damage them. Almost done. We've got two more peely. We didn't have, well, the thumbs came off really, but much. I'm also <laughs> trying to make sure that the camera sees this. I'm doing this at a really interesting angle compared to how we do it. So that's contributing to some um some fun stuff there. Um, I could probably also have better results with the peelies if I put thicker coat of the my peely base coat. Yeah, I probably put it on. Part of why I struggle the way I am right now. <clears throat> do, do I still sound okay, by the way? Because my microphone is actually behind me. So um, visually, it looks like when I look at like the microphone, like it's I'm still getting picked up, but. I don't know what that actually sounds like. If it sounds bad, y'all let me know and I'll play with the microphone. But... Got it. Got it all off. It sounds okayish, but when you're quiet, it goes fully silent. Oh, yeah, sorry, that sucks. Um, that probably does sound a little bit weird because you hear like fan noises and then all of a sudden it's like totally silent. Hang on a second. My dog is freaking out. I think she wants to get out. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, let me see if I can scoot the microphone a little bit more forward and if that helps a little bit with the weird silent gap. Okay, so we got most of the nail polish off, right? But there's still quite a lot like on my fingers. Like you can see um, underneath, there's quite a lot. And we'll talk about why polish goes there as well. Um, you can see that. So here's what we're gonna do next. We've got our acetone. There's not a particular brand of acetone that I necessarily prefer. Um, all acetone is pretty good. Right, all acetone is pretty good in my opinion. So I'm just going to put a little bit in this glass jar. Um, acetone breaks down plastic, right? Like that's what it does. That's its job. And that's what nail polish is. Nail polish is plastic, 
right? It's fancy plastic that goes on liquid and then dries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Q-tip right here and I'm gonna dip it so I just get a little bit of acetone. And I am going to then remove this right here, like what's underneath and what's still stuck on the nail. Um, and since I don't have very much on here, I don't end up having to do things where I put acetone like just all over my hand and my fingers. But I do want to wipe across the whole nail. And the reason why I want to do that is because I just put like all this oil on my nails and the polish isn't gonna really stick super well if they're oily. And it's also gonna make the next cleanup step kind of difficult, right? So I'm going to use this Q-tip and acetone to take off all the rest of the polish that didn't come off whenever I did the peels. Now, you probably can't see it on camera, but there are still remnants of the Peely base coat on my nail, and that's gonna end up getting handled in the next step as well as a couple of other things. So if you do notice that on camera, don't worry, we are going to tackle that. <clears throat> Okay, and hopefully that sound is a bit better cast now that I move the microphone around. Now when I'm doing this, I'm checking like the sides and around the nail here in addition to those tips because that's where the Peely base coat is not. So that's what I'm really looking for. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I guess it was, I was just too far away from it. Okay. This is my little trash pile. We'll take care of that in a second. Now when it comes when it comes to doing your nails, what I have to say in general is anyone can do it. Literally anyone can do this. I'll tell y'all I'll tell y'all my story. I chronically bit my nails. Um, like they say that uh, the kids who sucked their thumb or sucked their fingers become nail biters. I, I guess that's true because that's what happened to me. I, uh, I sucked my fingers as a child and I became a nail biter um, in adolescence, right? So sucked my fingers when I was a baby, childhood bit my nails. I bit my nails all the way up until age 27. Like, my God, like, so long age 27 like it's just ridiculous and i don't know what happened i don't know what happened that day at age 27 i had some kind of psychological or spiritual break in regard to my nail biting i don't know i just woke up and i decided i wasn't going to do it anymore i wasn't going to bite my nails and i don't know if any of you guys have ever like experienced something that was like really truly um chronically habitual or maybe an addiction or something like that um so i don't but if you have i think you might know what i'm talking about where like you do something for so long and then and you and you want to quit and you want to quit and you want to quit but then one day what you wake up and this is going to sound so bad but it's true you actually want to quit um and it's not it's not that i didn't want to quit biting my nails before that, it's just that I guess my brain wasn't ready. Like, I don't know. I don't know exactly how this works. All I know is that I woke up one morning and I was like, I'm actually for real done biting my nails. And I wasn't lying to myself this time. And I did. And I stopped biting my nails. And um, it took a long time to get to the point where I was doing my own manicures. Um, yeah, nail bedders, I know, usually barely have anything left. And, and I didn't. I didn't for years. Like, right? Like I didn't have anything left for years, um, but I, I eventually worked through it and started really taking care of my nails. And honestly, like, let me tell you, the two things, the two things that, that fixed my nails and why they look good today, one is jojoba oil and the other is keeping a manicure on 24 seven. I don't ever have my nails not painted, right? That's why they look good. You start doing manicures, um, even if you just have on a clear coat all the time, your nails will look so much better. Like, I promise you, I promise you that. Okay, so we're done with the acetone for right now. Right, got our little trash pile. We're gonna take care of that in a minute. What we're gonna do next is cuticle softener. So this is another thing where it's a pretty small bottle that I bought. 
I think I bought this again like a year and a half ago and it's I still I still have it like it still lasts so cuticle softener for me is essential I have cement cuticles like <laughs> they're ridiculous they're ridiculous my cuticles are so hard and awful and um and so I, I have to do this almost every manicure now once once in the summer months where your nails are doing a little bit better, I don't necessarily have to do this, but especially like in the winter months um, when my skin is a lot drier, uh, I, ha like, I have to, I have to do this. Um, so here's how, here's how I do it. So I'm going to apply this basically all around here, not on the nail, uh, on the nail. Now some of it gets on the skin, but that's not really what we're aiming for. We're aiming for it to be on the nail, right? Now you're gonna have to, as far as this step goes, this is definitely not a universal step. Everybody's body is different. Your cuticles might be like totally soft already and you don't even need cuticle softener. Maybe um, your cuticles don't come out as much as mine do. And so like you do need cuticle softener, but you only need to do yours like once a month, right? You just have to practice. You just have to practice with your own nail beds and your own body to know where you need to be in regards to cleaning up your cuticles. Um, Laura, I see your comment making me want to get into the habit of doing clear coat manicures because my nails are always shredded. Honestly, like it'll fix it. And now it takes time. So let me tell you, I did some bad manicures and my nails were still pretty awful for about a year of me doing this. And it took me, and this was partly because I didn't know what I was doing. Like I was just learning on YouTube and like, just doing as much as I could, right? We're gonna let that we're gonna let that sit for like a minute. Um, so I was just I was doing as much as I could, and and I it wasn't enough. Like it wasn't enough for a while, and so it just it took me a good I would say, I would say like year and a half to two years before I really fully learned how to take care of my nails. And and that first year was mostly because my nails were in such an awful state that certain things that should have worked or like YouTube said would work, like didn't work because my nails were so awful. And it just took like growing them and taking care of them and oiling them and just keeping and keeping practicing, right? So it's a long road. So I just want to warn you of that, Laura, if you want to start doing it, it's a long road to get to the point where your nails start looking good. Hey, Mochi, so happy to see you here. Um, oh, oh, I understand. I'm so sorry you've had a rough week, Mochi. Um, I've, I feel like this week for me has been a little bit better. I talked about this on Saturday stream last week, but like last week was freaking hell. It was awful, awful week. But um, this week's not been too bad. I really don't have a lot of complaints this week. Work's been going good. Um, hubby's, been, hubby's been great. Um, oh, something you missed, Mochi, is uh, is he got me a little gift, right? This guy right here, he got me a little Funko Pop Eevee. He told me a funny story when he brought it home that he's been looking for that at various like GameStops and stuff, like just casually for like a year and a half, and he finally saw one and got it for me. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is this is the same advice I gave before in regards to this tool. Um, I use this metal tool because I'm I'm rough and I don't care. Uh, but if you're concerned and, and your cuticles are not as crazy hard as mine are, then you need to get an orange wood stick instead. Don't use this. You'll destroy your nails. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just gently scrape over the entire nail surface, right? And the reason why I'm doing that is because I use the peel off base coat. I use the peel off base coat. So I'm just making sure that all that's gone. And then what I'm doing is going to do is much more firmly push my skin back. And while I'm doing that, what I'm doing is revealing the cuticle. So something that I took me a long time to understand is your cuticle is not the skin around your nail. What your cuticle is, is the, there's like, okay, your, your nail, if you imagine the way your nail grows, it grows like out of your finger, right? So there, that means there is nail forming inside your finger under your skin, right? So if you just kind of imagine that, I know it's gross, like nails are gross, y'all. <laughs> it's just, they are. Um, so if you kind of imagine that, the cuticle is leftover sticky internal gook that instead of staying inside your finger where it should to grow new nail, it ends up coming out and it goes on the actual nail plate that sticks out. And this is a totally natural, normal process. And the reason why we have to scrape off the cuticle is because 
it causes the polish not to stick as well. The polish is designed, the base coats are designed to stick to your nail bed. And so what that means is that anything that's in between the nail bed and your polish is going to cause your polish to like peel up, to chip off, all of those awful things. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm scraping off any other, any of the um, peel off base coat that I used and I'm also pushing back that nasty, gunky, cuticle mess. And that's why I have a paper towel here for this step because um, a lot of what's being scraped off here is the cuticle softener, but it's also like actual cuticle. This one has a lot and I can feel it. So when you guys do this step, like you'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to feel that resistance and that stuff on the nail. And that lets you know how much more you have to scrape. And if you do this, every manicure or every other manicure, or I don't know, whatever ends up working for you, then it's easier and easier to do it each time because you're scraping off more. Uh, Kendra, the complaint is bugging us, bugging you about the plot idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so if y'all are curious about the next role play, we're gonna, we're planning on launching the next role play in January. That's when I'd actually like to, for us to start role playing, right? So there'll be a, an application period and stuff in December is what I'm guessing. Um, but if y'all are curious about what my next role play is going to be, then you should come to the uh, next artistic license stream on next Thursday, because what I'm going to do is actually set up the Discord server. Now, I'm not going to show you all the plot or the mechanics or anything like that. What I'm really trying to do is redo my Discord server videos, because those are really old now. And I, you know, I've changed things. I do it differently. Discord's changed. I've changed. I've learned, you know. So I wanna show some differences of how that process is. So I kind of have an update to those videos. And then, um, and then, uh, and y'all are, but y'all are gonna see some clues, right? Y'all are gonna see some clues. So if you're cururious about what the next role play is gonna be, the next stream isn't gonna reveal it, but it's gonna have a lot of clues. So show up if you're interested. Laura, I'm so glad that you're learning so much because um, you had expressed to me that you really wanted to like share some of this stuff with your customers, right? Like that was kind of your goal. So I'm so glad. Okay, so we're going to wipe, wipe this off, right? Because this does, this does like do things to your nails. So you don't want to leave it on there too long, um, especially if you have like weaker nails or if your cuticles aren't super hard like mine, you want to be careful to not leave it on too long. I'm going to wipe that off, right? Like wipe off all that nastiness. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is go back and try to remove any cuticle that's still there and like, okay, most of y'all, please don't do this step. Like I'm being so rough on my nails, but this is what I do because my cuticles are really hard and disgusting. So I like actually take this tool and I run it along that edge, just scraping out any additional nasty cuticle that is still in there. Okay, so this is what we're doing. There's some in that one. Yuck. Why are human bodies so gross, y'all? We have so many icky fluids. Um, fun fact about, about cuticle that I learned through my nail journey. This is apparently the stickiest substance that the human body produces. And I believe it. It's definitely the stickiest substance that I have ever experienced. Like I said, mine are freaking cement. So what will happen a lot of times when you go to the salon around this step is they'll pull out those cuticle nippers and like start cutting the extra skin. Y'all do not do this. Like don't, don't do this. If a salon does it, don't go to that salon again. Like it's so unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. I'll show y'all. We'll do this at the end. We'll make the skin look really good, but it's unnecessary. It potentially will make you bleed. Um, and it's just like, like, look, they're fine. Like I don't, you don't need to do that. It may feel like you need to, um, but all you need to do is keep doing this and keep practicing, right? And your nails will eventually do the right thing. You don't have to cut your skin and introduce potential bacteria into your fingers and stuff like that. Um, this is why mine never move. I mean, possibly, um, possibly Kendra, like I, mine are, mine are awful. They're awful cement. 
uh, I don't know. It's like a genetic thing, right? Like everybody's body is different, right? So it's a genetic thing um, that they're like this. I'm just gathering all my trash up. Just gathering all my trash. And when I, when it comes to a manicure, like it's not just painting the nails, right? It's really about taking care of your nails and, and making them, making sure that they are as strong as they can be, making sure that they are like well shaped and all of that good stuff too. Okay. So we're done with these two tools. They can go away. Next step is the filing. So a lot of people will tell you to not file the sides like this, but my nails grow in really weird. So I'm going to file the sides. Um, there's probably a reason people say that. So if you're not me, then follow the general advice and don't file the sides like I'm doing. Okay. But mine grow in super weird. So I'm going to file the sides again. It's all about like everybody's body's different, right? Everybody's body is different and you're going to need to do different things and just practice, right? Like practice with yourself so that you can learn how yours work. So I'm going to file those sides and you can kind of see what I'm doing it. Like you can see like it built up like a bunch of stuff built up there, right? Like my sides grow in so weird. If I don't do this, they get like all nasty wonky looking. So we're going to do it. Uh, only have cuticle on one nail. So I guess you got my share. I guess so, Lar. I wish, I wish my cuticle was not so gross. Um, but they're really bad. They're especially bad on these two fingers. And the funny thing is, when I was a baby, these, this, this was what I did. Like, these were the fingers that I sucked on, right? So maybe, maybe I did it, right? Like, maybe I did it to myself. Maybe it's not just genetic. <laughs> I don't know. But um, that's something I find interesting. So when it comes to filing your nails, this is something where if... If they've not broken, you don't necessarily have to do this every time. But something that I have found with nail filing is that if I let my nails get too long, they kind of get like dangerously long, right? Where it's way easier for me to break them. So I have like kind of this optimal nail length that I found. And um, the other thing about filing the nails that I wanted to share is that I love to use a glass file. I think these are so great. Um, they last for freaking ever and they're not expensive. And then you can just wash them off at the end. Like all this powder and stuff that's going everywhere. I can just rinse this thing off and then we're good. Like we're good. I can keep using it. Um, whereas when you have emery boards, I feel like they only last so long and then you kind of have to throw them away, right? Not with a glass nail file. I'm sorry for anybody that doesn't like nail filing noises. I hopefully they're soft enough that the microphone's not picking them up. So if you hate those noises, I'm really, really sorry. Okay, so I just I really want to get them down just a little bit just because I want to keep the length that I have right now. If they get too much longer, I'm gonna start breaking them and I don't want that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of round off these corners. That's what's going to look really nice for my particular nails. Like a slight coffin shape I found is what looks best with my hand. Um, again, that's not going to be true for everybody, right? Like for some people, it's all about the, um, the rounded. For some people, they want that square with those like really sharp edges, right? But I kind of like this coffin with the rounded edges. And I know y'all can't see this super well. So I'm like putting it really close to my face. I want to make sure that this looks right. And the other wonderful thing when it comes to nails that I have found. Because this applies to like filing and the shape and stuff like that too. No one is ever going to look as closely at your nails as you are looking at them. So don't worry about being too perfect. No one else is going to see that. Do you file in one direction or, or do you saw back and forth? The only filing in one direction, to be honest, like in my experience, that is bullshit advice. I don't, the reasons that people cite saying it, um, I, I don't think are true. I think it's one of those like beauty school things that's handed down as wisdom that it's, it's again, it's about your, your body chemistry. Like depending on how your nails are built, like maybe for you filing in one direction works better, but with a glass file, 
I, I find no difference sawing or just one direction. It makes no difference. Um, what I really have to do when it comes to filing my nails is make sure that I did it evenly, right? I have a very, very slight astigmatism, okay? So I can't see in a straight line. So a lot of times when I do like my initial file, I'll like jack it up and make the line really crooked. So that's what I'm checking right now. See if I did that and it looks like I did do that on my pink. Let's fix that so that it's a straight line. That finger too looks a little bit crooked. Um, if you don't have astigmatism, I don't think you'll have nearly as much of a problem because I, I literally can't see the straight lines properly. Like I have to really concentrate and compare line to line to see if it's straight. Like I have to compare this to like another straight line that I'm looking at to know if it's a straight line. Um, so that's just something for me. Okay, so at this step, our nails are basically all cleaned and prepped and they are ready for polish. Now, before we can actually do that polish, we have to rinse them off. There's like this, there's probably still like a remnants of, you know, the cuticle softener on there. There's probably still remnants of the oil. There's definitely dust all over them from filing them. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to be right back. I'm gonna throw away my trash. I'm gonna rinse off my nails and then, and wash the file and I will be right back. So give me about two minutes because of course I don't have a sink in, <laughs> in the spare bedroom that I'm in right now. So I'll be right back guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm just putting in my headphones so I can hear any alerts. All right, so a couple of things at this step. One thing that you have to do, go pee, because it's going to be a minute, especially when you're new at doing your nails, it's gonna be a minute before you can pee because your nail polish is drying, right? And you don't wanna jack it up. So please go pee because you won't be able to. You won't be able to get your pants off. I guess alternatively, you could just do your nails without pants on, you know. <laughs> That's an option, but I would recommend um, just going to pee. And then the other thing that I really recommend is you have to dry, you have to dry your hands off really, really well. And then I do a last little check. Like sometimes when you file your nails, you know, you get like the, like it underneath, you'll get like a little bit of it underneath. It doesn't look like that happened this time. I can't show it to you guys, but if you've done, filed your nails down before, then you know what I'm talking about. So I always like do another little check to make sure that like I actually got everything off that I wanted to, um, that, uh, that the file is how I want it, because the next thing that we're going to do is actually apply polish. Actually, let me just, I'm going to feel like I was looking a little bit yellow. I wanted to change the background lights. Maybe that would fix it. Okay. I think that helped a little bit, maybe. 
No, I look yellower with that. What about purple? Okay, that doesn't look too bad. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so while I'm doing these other coats, I'm going to talk about that. But here's, here's what I want to do for the color. So just so that you guys are aware, we have several different ink polishes that I brought. I'm going to use this polish as like underneath just because a lot of times glitter polishes um they aren't as uh as opaque as you would want them to be some of these are more opaque than others but here since y'all wanted the pink glitter here's what i brought this is like a hollow pink it looks pinker in real life than it does on the camera then there's this one which is just like a basic glitter pink and then there is this guy which is a very it's it's pink but it's like got kind of faintly glitter and it's got a little bit of hollow in there so i'm going to swatch these so that you guys can see what they look like and then um, you can kind of decide. So we're going to call this one number one and see what that looks like. Get a lot of it down there so it shows up good on the camera. That's what that one looks like. I'll do my phone. Let me do my phone flash over it. I think that might give it a more true color. Oh, that's too bright. Didn't work that's too bright okay you're just gonna have to trust me it's a little bit pinker in real life all right let's do this one this is polish number two pink glitter number two so this one's a lot pinker um but it's a little bit more basic with the glitter right there's not hollow in this one there's just it's just like silver glitters so that's number two so we've got one put them right that one, two, and let's do number three. So the number three, I'll show you what this one looks like. This one's a little bit thinner, but it has a mix. It has a mix of the of hollow and silver glitters. And it'll end up looking pinker because we're gonna do that pink underneath it. All right, so that's the three different pink glitters that I brought. So y'all let me know one, this guy, two, that's this guy, or three, that's this guy. Y'all let me know in the chat what you're most interested in. Um, and that's what we'll do for our color. All right, so before we get to that step, what we have to do is our base code. Um, now, three, okay, so that's a vote for three. Uh, okay, so we have to do the base coat first. Now, when it comes to the base coat, oh, I got one that's too hard to open. Oh, there we go. I got it. Um, when it comes to the base coat, the base coats base coats are designed to bind to the nail. Color polish, like the color polish, is not designed to bind to the nail. So if when you painted your nails as a kid, or you like you first started painting your nails maybe as an adult, if you didn't fully understand that, you wonder like. Why does my polish always chip? Why does it always look like that? Part of the reason is because you're not using a base coat. You're just trying to put color straight on your nails. It doesn't work. So I use a peel off base coat called UNT, U-N-T, okay? U-N-T, UNT, I think is how you say it, it's German. Um, Marina, I'm sure she's asleep, but when you watch this later, you can tell me if I said that right. Peel off base coat. This is the, my favorite one. A lot of peel off base coats have weird smells. So I don't like those. A lot of peel off base coats remind me um, of glue. Like they're just the way that they stick and the way that they peel. I don't like it. Um, this one's really good. So I love Oont and I got a brand new bottle. I got a brand new bottle. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to bring the brand new bottle to stream. Okay. And we're going to paint this on. And the way that you paint on a peel off base coat basically is pretty similar the way that you'd paint on another, any other coat, but we are not going to wrap the tip. So if y'all aren't sure what that means, I'll show you what that means when we do the next coat. We're not gonna wrap the tip, okay? We're just gonna put it on the top, just like that. I love using peel off base coats because then I don't have to worry about getting so much acetone all over my hands and drying them out, especially right now where we had some cold days, right? 
My skin gets so dry. I used to never have a problem with dry skin, ever at all. Then I became 30. All of a sudden, all of a sudden I wasn't a greasy teenager anymore, right? All of a sudden. So that first swipe, I put a little bit too much on, so this is what I'm gonna do. This will make a little bit more sense when I, if I'm, when I jack up the color. But like, I'm just gonna run this along here to kind of like wipe off some of that excess that got next to my skin. Okay. We're gonna explain that step a little bit more later when it's, it's more relevant on the colors. Um, you can't really see it too well in these base coats because they are clear. Okay, so that's that hand. Now we're gonna do the other hand. And I know y'all can't really see me doing the thumbs exactly. It's just kind of an awkwardness of painting thumbs. Thumbs are weird. Thumbs are really weird when it comes to painting your nails. They're like so like so wide compared to all my other nails. It looks really weird. And I think I think my nails also are healthier because I'm using a peel off base coat because I'm not taking the steps to damage them so much with the um with the acetone. I feel like for me in particular the acetone is really damaging. So I really like not having to use. Now when you paint your nails even with this coat you want to be careful not to touch the skin. You want just a little bit of a gap, right? Like you just want a little bit of a gap between the nail and the skin. All right, so Unt actually recommends doing two coats of this. I don't, you'll see why in a second when we actually do the next coat, but that's it, we're done. We're done with the peel off base coat. So now we're gonna let this dry. Um, and that's another big thing when it comes to doing your nails is I don't have one of those fancy fans or things like that, like they have at, a, at the salon. So when we're ready for our nails to dry, we just sit and wait. And I think this is one of the harder parts, at least it was for me. One of the harder parts of learning to do my own nails is learning how to not jack them up while I'm sitting there doing the boring waiting for them to dry. I'm sure I'm not alone with this, right? Like I'm sure some of you guys have had this struggle too, that have tried to paint your own nails. So it really is just sitting there and waiting. Now I've gotten real good at typing while my nails are wet, so I can kind of do that now. I couldn't really at first. And there are certain things I can do. Like since I've had this much practice, I, I can like kind of like do some things, but not a lot, right? Like not a lot. Uh, there's definitely things that you just can't do. You just have to wait for your nails to dry. That's why I said like important step in between is to go pee. <laughs> <laughs> because um, you're not gonna be able to. Not without jacking up your nails anyway, because we have several layers before we are done. So I wanna give these a good amount of time to dry. And the truth is, that's probably gonna be, <clears throat> most of the rest of this stream is me doing a coat and then sitting and waiting, right? Sitting and waiting. So I'll talk about, um, some of the the things that that I did back when I first stopped biting my nails. I was working in the call center at the time, working in the call center, answering phone calls and doing tech support. <laughs> That's what I was doing at the time. And so a lot of that job uh, was very distracting to where I couldn't bite my nails, right? Because you're multitasking. Like if anybody's ever worked in a call center, like, you know, you're talking on the phone, you're like searching for stuff for answers. You're like taking notes in your case note software, right? Like you're doing, you're doing all the things, right? You're doing all the things. There was a lot of that, but there was still downtime in between calls. And what I would do is play with Play-Doh. <laughs> so I would play with Play-Doh. And that was a big way that, um, that I helped myself not bite my nails whenever I would get the urge because you know if you're a nail biter like it comes from it comes from all kinds of things right it comes from all kinds of things so one of the things that definitely came from for me was like a soothing technique right so if you get to have a difficult call an annoying customer or whatever like you want to you want to bite your nails a little bit 
So instead I would play with Play-Doh. Never worked before. Like I tried this stuff before and it didn't work, but for some reason at age 27, that stuff actually started working. So, you know, I've been so frustrated beforehand about like why people gave these tips. I'm like, these tips are so stupid. They don't do anything. But when I really wanted to, they finally did. I don't know. I don't know what it's about. So while the nail polish is drying, what you'll notice is that your fingers feel really cold. Like they feel cold to me when it's wet. And like as it dries, your fingers will get a little bit less cold. So that's how you'll start to know when the polish is dry. And it takes a while, right? Like it takes a while to kind of get that sense for it. And y'all are probably not surprised because a lot of my advice that I give for role play also boils down to like practice and patience. And that's a lot of my advice when it comes to the nail stuff too. Practice and patience, like keep practicing, get that, get that muscle memory so you can paint them well. Um, and then, and then be patient with yourself. Uh, like I said, when I first started doing manicures, they didn't look good, right? Like they didn't look good for a long time. I didn't understand what I was doing. I, I would take a lot of the advice, but not know how to implement it. Or I would like not understand why the advice was correct. And so I wouldn't do it, you know? And then eventually, like I started figure, figuring it out and practicing and stuff like that. But the great thing is if you do use a peel off base coat, you can easily change your polish and you can change it frequently. And that frequent practicing is what's gonna really help you guys be able to do this if you're interested in starting to do your nails. All right, so I think it's mostly dry. Let's, yeah, that's dry. Okay, so I actually do two base coats. My second base coat, this looks like it's a bottle of oont, but this is a weird color. <laughs> That's because it's not a bottle of oomph. This is a bottle of Million Nails by, by Essie. Okay, this is Million Nails by Essie that I poured into an oomph bottle because if y'all have ever used Essie polishes, you know, oh, those brushes are for babies. Oh my God. Like, they're so tiny. They're like the tiniest little brushes and they're not just like, they're not just like the thin style brushes. They're like literally like tiny, like not just thin, tiny. It's ridiculous. So fuck Essie brushes. But Million Nails is a really good product. So what is this product? What exactly is Million Nails? Million Nails is a smoothing base coat. Yeah, the brushes do suck. They do. They really suck. There's something weird on this brush wipe it off. Okay. Um, so this is a smoothing base coat. Sometimes you'll also hear these called ridge filler base coats, which doesn't make any sense because you don't want to fill ridges. Those go up. You want to fill the divots. So I use this to make sure that like the canvas of the nails themselves are really nice and smooth so that the polish applies really well and easily. Okay. And then what I'm doing, you can see me doing this here. Didn't do this on the peel off base coat step, but I'm doing this on this step. I'm wrapping the tip. If you want your polish to last, you've got to remember to wrap the tip. So that is what I'm doing here. And I'll do this on some layers, but not others. So why don't I do this for the peel off base coat? All right. So for the peel off base coat, it has a tendency to pop off. Right, like when you use a peel off base coat, something that you'll notice is apparent, especially for like your pointer and middle finger, because you use those a lot, is those peelies will just pop right off sometimes, especially if you try to wear it for more than a week or so. They'll just pop right off. So what that means is that if I wrapped the tip, there would be nothing else really binding to the nail. So those peelies would be way more likely to just pop right off. But for this, since I'm wrapping the tip and I didn't do it with the peel off base coat, now that tip wrap is what is adhering to the nail. Like this is still a base coat, right? So it's still designed to adhere to the nail. So it's still gonna do that. And it's gonna make my manicure still last a while 
while at the same time being easy to take off when I'm ready. So using two base coats like this, using a peel off base coat and then a smoothing base coat on top of it, serves both of those purposes. It makes your manicure last much longer, whereas a peel off base coat manicure a lot of times doesn't. And then it also gives that really smooth surface so when you put on the color, it looks way better. We're gonna let that dry. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for a minute. Okay, I love Unt because it has those nice wide brushes, but I am more likely to make mistakes with them and I can feel one that I made. I can feel I got some polish on the skin. So we're just gonna clean that up. And so as y'all can see, like on both layers, I've had a nail that I did not paint perfectly, that I've had to come back and clean it up. And I'll show this, I'll, I'm sure I'll do this with one of the color layers so y'all see, see it and you'll be able to see exactly what's happening. Um, like I'm not, my, my manicures are not perfect, right? Like I only ever do manicures on myself. You know, when, it, when, you're, when you go to a salon and you get somebody that's working in a salon to do your manicure, like they're doing dozens of manicures a day sometimes, like lots and lots and lots, right? So of course, for them, it's gonna be way easier to do it correctly and, and not make mistakes. Now they still do, of course, but it's gonna be way easier. For me, excuse me, that's only doing them like once a week, then I am more likely to make mistakes, but you can clean it up, right? So that is really the secret to having your manicure look nice is to clean up the mistakes. Don't leave them there. Oh, Lunar, oh my gosh, thank you so much for doing a two months. Oh. <laughs> uh, you're you're my, first, uh, my first subscriber and I'm so happy that you're back again. Oh, Lunar, since you're here, I have to tell you something. I didn't understand how bits worked. <laughs> so when you gave so many on Saturday, I didn't understand. I didn't understand that it was like $10. I thought it was like a dollar. So I have to reiterate my thank you and tell you, um, thank you so much. I didn't make a big enough deal about it. I feel like uh, when you donated those bits, cause I didn't understand. <laughs> so thank you so much for doing that on, um, on the Saturday stream. And thank you for resubscribing. Um, if you guys are interested, <laughs> yeah, if you guys are interested, um, you can of course subscribe uh, here on Twitch. Um, I have the bits turned on. If you want to, if you want to make a straight up donation, I also have that turned on. That's the tips down there. Um, you're welcome to do any and all of that as you wish. Not required, but very much appreciated if you want to do that. All right, what other nail stuff was I saying? I think I explained. I explained the base coat. Okay, there's also lots of other kinds of base coats. Like I use a combination of a of a peel off base coat and then a smoothing base coat. But there's like long lasting base coats. If you really are somebody that doesn't want to do your nails super often, there are base coats that are like designed to stick better to the nail so that they chip less. Um, there are there are just like regular base coats. There are base coats that uh, that claim to like do nail repairs, um, all of those sorts of things. To be honest, I've never found any of those base coats to work for me the way that this combination of base coats works. But Again, everybody's body chemistry is different. Everybody's nails are different. So just because using a peel off and then using a smoothing is what works for me, that doesn't even necessarily mean that's what's going to work for you. You might want to explore some of those other types of base coats depending on your, your, your makeup, right? So just practice. I think just practice and try different things. Like don't take what I'm saying to be the end all be all. One thing I will say with base coats though, do not under any circumstances get one of those combination base coat top coats. Okay, they don't work. They don't work for the exact same reason that combination shampoo conditioners don't work. Okay, and when you combine shampoo and conditioner, you get a shitty shampoo and also a shitty conditioner. It's one step, but it doesn't do either thing very well. And that's exactly the problem with combination base coat top coats. We'll talk about top coat when I get to that, but don't do it, y'all. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. It's just, it's not gonna work. The same reason that two-in-one shampoos don't work. So don't even go there. 
All right. Um, this one dries pretty quick. I think it's actually already dry. I'm just going to do a little touch. This is what I'm doing, by the way. I think y'all can't see it, but I'm just like tapping it very, very lightly. And then I'm seeing if it left any kind of fingerprint. A slight fingerprint is probably okay because I'm testing the, the nails that I'm going to paint second. But, you know, um, this also is a good stopping point. So if, if you need to go do something after you put on your base coat, you can kind of stop and go do some stuff before you do the rest. That's not best practice. You really should finish your whole manicure because that's what seals. The whole thing is what seals it all in. But you can stop here and go do some stuff if you don't have time to finish your manicure at this point. So what we're going to do next is actually let's do this so i have a need for an accent nail so i made an executive decision and brought some gold i know y'all didn't vote for gold but whatever um <laughs> i i have to have an accent nail okay so so we're gonna do i'm going to paint a little accent nail first and then we'll do that pink color. okay so this is a this is a metallic gold we're going to put the first coat on. You can see the color start to go on. And this one takes a few coats to be opaque. This is probably the sheerest of my like metallic ones that I have. Usually metallic polishes are very, very opaque. So it'll take a few coats to build this up. Pink and gold are my brand colors. Oh, perfect, Lunar. That is absolutely perfect. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to wrap the tip, of course, for the first coat of that. And then we'll do the accent on the other one. Usually accent nail is the ring finger. And the reason why is because that is the finger that you wear your ring on. So it usually has some bling, right? Like that's where, where I wear my engagement ring and my wedding band. And you probably are too if you are married or have like, you know, some kind of um, ring that you have for your partnership. That's probably where you wear it. So that is why the ring finger is typically the accent nail okay and i did mess up like let's see if you can see it see how like i got just a little bit of polish on the skin there oh my gosh focus camera focus yeah there we go a little bit of it on the skin we're gonna wipe that right off no problem and the brush that i do that with is this angled brush so you'll see these labeled as angled brushes or you'll see them labeled as um as eyebrow brushes because that's their primary use is for eyebrows in makeup totally work for our purposes now depending on what glue they use to glue the bristles into into the metal piece here means that sometimes when you use these brushes for this purpose they'll fall all apart right because as you remember from the beginning acetone breaks down plastic right and nail polish is plastic that's what it is so this one actually has lasted a really long time. I got very, I've gotten very lucky with this one. I don't know what kind of magic glue they used, but it's not breaking down. Um, now others I have destroyed. Like I use them a few times and then they're just dead. So that's something to be aware of. It might, you might have to go through a bunch before you find one that actually lasts because what will eventually happen is like the glue will break down from the acetone and the bristles will fall out. But typically angled brushes aren't super expensive. So find like a, massive pack of them like on Amazon or Wish or something like that and um, and just buy a whole bunch right because they probably won't last most of them don't all right so here we go we're going to put this layer down first now this is a pink creme but the reason why we're doing this is because it's going to make the glitter pop and look way more pink right look way more pink so I Oh, this is hard to do at this angle for the camera to see it. Okay. Um, so I'm making more mistakes than normal, but that's okay because you'll get to see more cleanup than normal. And that's where really the key is to making the manicure look good. Now I use the brand that I use, and all these polishes that you see, the color polishes, you'll see they're the same brand. They're clean color. Um, why do I use this brand? Because I'm a cheap ass bitch. They are so cheap. These are like, you can find these for like less than a dollar a bottle. Sometimes they're a little bit more. I've seen them go for as much as $2 a bottle, depending on the seller. But you can find a bunch of these on like Amazon and eBay and all kinds of um, like online retailers like that. 
and they are so cheap. Now, doesn't that mean that the formula is not that good? Yes. This formula is not that good. It took me lots of practice to get, you know, decent with these. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to use. It doesn't go on super smooth, right? Um, but very cheap. So I practiced and I figured it out. Another benefit to this formula is that it dries very fast. Most of the clean colors dry very, very fast. Now this is a double-edged sword, right? Double-edged sword because although that means that there is less wait time in between coats, and it means that you can't jack it up afterwards as easily, it also means that if you work too slow, it's really hard to fix the mistakes. So when you first put the polish on, you have some time to kind of like push it around the nail, kind of get the lines exactly how you want them and all of that lovely stuff. If the faster the polish dries, the less time you have to do stuff like that. So what that means is that because these dry really quick, typically clean color dries really quick, you have less time to kind of mess around with those types of mistakes. So even more important to why this little cleanup technique right here that I'm doing really matters because you gotta work a little bit faster than you might have to with some other polishes. But I love it for those two reasons, that it dries really fast, is really, really cheap. And y'all that have seen my wall of nail polish, which um, is going to be in the thumbnail. So if you are watching this on YouTube, you've seen it. Also, if you're in my Discord server, you've seen it because I shared a picture of it last week. I have so much nail polish. And mostly, I justify those purchases by it being mostly these clean colors that are very, very cheap. Okay, and y'all see for the first coat of this, I am wrapping the tip. So I am doing that for the first coat of the color. And we're gonna do the glitter next. So for y'all that haven't voted yet, so Lara did, she said number three, but this is one, two, three. Um, and I swatched them. Oh, this isn't a shadow now, so you can't see it as well. Let's move these guys. Y'all can see them better. So this is one, two, and three of the different pink glitter colors that I brought. So y'all let me know, one, two, or three, what do you want? As of right now, we're going to do number three. Um, but if you disagree, then let me know what other color you would be interested in, because that's what we're going to put on for the second coat. We're going to put on the glitter. Almost done with that. All right, so while we're waiting on that coat to dry, we're going to do the second coat of the gold so that that gets a little bit more opaque, right? Now, even if you have a polish that is opaque in one coat, like basically that pink I just put on, it's opaque in one coat. I don't have to do another coat, but I do recommend it because remember the polish is protecting your nails, right? The polish is protecting your nails. So I want to have a few coats on there. Like I don't want it to be really thin. Now, some people don't like that. Some people are like, oh, I don't, I don't like the feeling. It's like so thick on my nails. Da, da, da. Uh, disagree wholeheartedly. For me, it feels nice and protective, so I am all for it. Now on the second coat, what you'll notice is that I'm not wrapping the tip because I don't, I don't want like the tips to feel like too much, right? But I do want it to be really protective on the nail. And when I do the second coat, what I'm really trying to do is like pay attention to my brush strokes and get it really smooth looking. So you probably can't see that in that much detail on camera, but in real life, like I can like kind of see the brush strokes in there a little bit. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get it real nice and smooth, real nice and smooth brush strokes. That. Some on the skin again. What's the polish on the skin? Had to tap out for a hot minute. Did she give tips on working with your offhand? I have not given tips on working with your offhand. Thank you so much for reminding me. So, okay. Um, 
while while I'm letting you guys, I'm gonna be gonna give you guys a few more minutes to vote. So for anybody that doesn't want number three, I know Luna, you said two, but we've got two votes for number three now. So for anybody that doesn't want number three, please make your voice known. Um, so while while y'all have until the end of my explanation of this, for the end of my explanation of painting with the offhand. So no one's gonna like these tips. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number one super duper tip, practice. You're gonna be garbage with your off hand at first. Your dominant hand is gonna look worse than your other hand. And that is how it is. Like you just have to practice, right? These strokes that you're doing with the brush, you will get a muscle memory for it. You will get a muscle memory for it. And that is the number one tip I have for painting with your off hand on your dominant hand. Practice. No one's surprised, right? This is all my help, the way my advice typically goes. <laughs> okay, other tips is just be a mess and then use this, you know, use this cleanup, right? Like use your angled brush, brush to clean it up. No one knows. No one knows that it looked super jacked at first, right? Like if I want to be really meticulous, I can literally do this. And I used to do this when, like, when I was really bad at it, right? Like you can go around every single one of these and make them look like perfect. Like they probably look perfect on camera, right? But they're really not. This is kind of jacked. Let's fix him. Just really slowly cross here. That. Okay. Not too bad. Um, so those, that's the other tip, right? Use your cleanup brush and your acetone to fix the mistakes because you're going to make them. You're going to make them more when it comes to painting with your off hand. Um, and that's true no matter how much practice you've had. I'm way more likely to have something jacked up on this hand because I painted it with my left than on this hand. This hand is always going to look slightly better. Third tip, it's not really a tip, it's just kind of changing your, your mind frame. No one's ever gonna look this close at your nails. Like, okay, y'all see my nails pretty up close and even that, even it's not that close, right? Cause I don't have a super good setup for this. I could probably do a better job. But like even this, like I'll put them up in the camera. You can really see what they look like. <sighs> Focus. 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 But was it the See, there we go. No one is ever, ever, ever going to get this close to your nails. Like, holy crap. Especially right now. Who's going to grab your hand and who's going to grab your hand and look at your nails? Nobody. Okay. So don't stress. Relax. Let life roll off your back. It's okay. They don't have to be perfect. I started getting compliments on my nails way sooner than when I actually got good at it, okay? So it really doesn't take much practice to get to the point that you start getting compliments. That's the truth. So don't stress, just do it, it's okay. All right, so number three, one, goodbye to these two. We're gonna use this one right here. The glitter is a little bit subtler in here, but it has both hollow and sparkle, like regular sparkle. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put this over the pink. We're going to have some nice, beautiful pink glitter. Um, my bad paint job is between me and my guardian angel. Exactly, Kendra. Exactly. Nobody really is looking that close, okay? And you know what? You're putting forth effort in your appearance, and honestly, like, that's going to be enough for most people to have positive thoughts in regards to your appearance. So, all good. I don't know on camera like how much this glitter is going to show up. So this might really not look like I'm doing anything to you guys, but I promise I can see it in real life. I'm going to put the glitter on. I'm not going to wrap the tip. Oh yeah, yeah, y'all can kind of see it. Ooh. So I'm not going to wrap the tip for this step. It's just not necessary, right? It's not necessary. We're just going to paint it on. And I'm doing this kind of thick because I want lots of glitters. 
Now a technique you can use, um, instead of putting like a similar color underneath, right? Like I can do that because I have a gajillion nail polishes. Um, but if you don't, the technique you can use is to get a makeup sponge and put some glitter, put this polish on the makeup sponge and then sponge it on. And that's gonna get a really thick glitter coating onto the nail. Um, if you Google glitter sponge in YouTube, you'll see videos of what I'm talking about. And it, uh, it looks really, really good and really bright and glittery. So most of the time when you get a glitter polish, it doesn't pack a lot of glitters in it. Now I grabbed three that I knew were particularly good, right? Cause I've practiced with my polishes specifically and I know which ones suck and which ones don't. So I knew these would have a decent amount of glitter in them to potentially hopefully show up on camera. Um, it looks like it's showing up on camera a little bit, but, um, but a lot of glitter is not like that, right? So then you get the sponge and you sponge it on. By the way, if y'all enjoyed this, if y'all feel like you got a lot out of this, I have a lot of other like, you know, nail techniques that I can show you guys beyond just this basic manicure. So, um, you know, let me know in like the YouTube comments, if you're watching this on YouTube or, you know, if you're watching this live, let me know in the Twitch chat or like afterwards or something. Cause we can do definitely more nail streams. If y'all are um, interested in some more techniques for like different ways you can apply polish and things like that. What I really wanted to cover today was just the basics or like, I wanted to give you guys a good chunk of information on just the basics of applying nail polish so that you could do an at-home manicure. I'm going to put one more coat of the gold on. I don't think it's, I don't think it's popping enough. So I'm going to do that while we wait for the glitter to dry. Um, cause I know right now cases, COVID cases are rising again. So we're back to like really not knowing when this is going to be over. I know some European countries like the UK and Germany are going back into lockdown these past couple of weeks. So I don't recommend going to a salon, of course. A lot of you are uncomfortable going to a salon. So you can do this manicure at home and it really, you can put in a little bit of practice and get good at it. And then after that, you can save Buku money. Like literally, because you can use these so many times over and over and they cost like a dollar, this in total, if I were to break it all out, is probably like two cents, two cents in my time, right? So when you go to the salon, what you're paying for is their time and expertise, right? You're not paying for the materials. So if you want to dedicate the time to learning to do it yourself, you can, it can be so much cheaper, right? It can be so much cheaper. So that is something right now that I definitely recommend for everyone to really be looking into. By the time lockdown is done, we will be pros. Exactly, Kendra. I feel like, so I feel like when I started doing my nails, so what I'm doing right now, I'm gonna wait for a while longer for everything to dry like super, super hard before I do the next step. I'll tell you why in a second. But while we are waiting on that, while we are waiting on that, I'll tell you guys a little bit more details about my journey with it. I would say about, five or six months in I started getting compliments my nail still looked like garbage I didn't understand to leave a gap like I've done here so like the nail polish was like all caked up on my fingers on the skin right like I didn't understand um what a good base coat was for me so it would chip really easily because I just hadn't experimented with enough of them to know which ones worked for me and which ones didn't I didn't understand peel off base coats. So I was like really destroying my nails with acetone all the time. I was using those fake like gel like gel like nail polishes, which are garbage, by the way, they take forever to dry. So like my nail, my manicures, they didn't look good, right? They didn't look good. But people started to notice around then that I was having my nails painted all the time. And it was just a pretty color, right? Like I, I was picking out pretty colors. And so I was getting compliments already, even though they didn't look good. 
I don't think they started looking good until about a year, maybe a year and a half in, right? So really, it doesn't take long to start to see like the external benefits of it. And then I would say, I would say around a year, year and a half or so is when I started thinking my manicures actually looked good, right? I started believing what people were saying. I was like, okay, they actually look the way I want them to look. And I think they look good around then. And then I would say at about the two year mark is when I really started seeing like my nails themselves behave the way that everyone else's nails behave or in my mind, the way everyone else's nails behave. So like things I started seeing was like, you can tell when you, okay, you can really tell on my thumbs, show this in the camera, focus, focus. I think it's trying to focus on the, come on camera. Yeah, it's not doing it. Uh, you can barely see it. You can barely see it in the camera. But like my nail bed actually goes out to the end of my finger now, which was something that I started noticing around the two year mark. And so what that means is that the the what's actually the nail part that's actually like attached to my finger is much longer now which is a huge part of the nails appearing healthy. So when I upload this to YouTube and you guys, if you guys go back and look at it, you, you can kind of pay a little bit of attention to my nails when they're naked. And you'll see like these ones I tend to stub a lot. So the, the white part starts a lot lower than the rest of my nails. And that white part, that really white part is where they're not attached to the finger anymore. And the part, that part used to be super, super low. Oh no, we got the spam bots again. My God. Get out. Thank you. Thank you for helping with that, um, Kendra. <clears throat> I couldn't do it as quick with my nails tacky. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, all, for some reason, it only takes me having like over seven viewers and I get weird ass spam bots in here, whatever. Oh, thank you. That sounds good. I mean, they're bots, like they're not people, so that should work. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Around then is when I actually started seeing like my nails themselves really be so much better and healthier. So I know two years sounds like a really long time to get all of those benefits, but I find painting nails really fun and enjoyable and relaxing. Like there's something really relaxing about like you take the, the polish and you like paint it on, right? And it's like a repetitive stroke, like over and over and over. There's something really like nice and relaxing and therapeutic about that. And at the end, you get this beautiful thing. You get this beautiful thing that you get to look at every day and admire, right? Because I can just look at it. I can just look down at my nails and it's just like, oh, beautiful. And I get that, those moments. Um, so I know two years sounds like a long time, but when you think about it that way, the time really is gonna fly by. If you're interested in trying this, the time's really gonna fly by. Okay, so I think it's basically dry. The reason why I waited until it was in a while, until it was really, really dry is because I use a quick dry top coat. So Sage Veet, Sage Veet, I think is how you say that. Although I can't pronounce words, so that might be wrong, but you can see it. So you can type it into the, the Googles to find it. It's a quick dry top coat. It dries really, really fast. If your color is not all the way dry, when you apply a quick dry top coat, what's going to happen is it's going to like pucker up, right? Because it's, it's wet underneath, but then the top will dry and it'll do like kind of, right? Like, so if you get little like bumps, or like ridges, like little waves in your nails when you apply your top coat, you're not waiting long enough for your color to dry. Your color needs to be almost dry, like just tacky when you apply your top coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. 
and I strongly recommend when it comes to top coats using a quick dry top coat. Now just like base coats, there's lots of different ones out there and you can experiment and you can try it around, but I don't think it takes as much experimenting with a top coat. What a top coat is designed for is to seal in your polish, make it really hard and glossy, right? And it's not touching the nail, it's touching the polish. So you're not fighting with um you're not fighting with your body chemistry so i don't think it takes nearly as much like experimenting or looking around for a good top coat i really think sagevit is amazing and it will work for everyone oh Cass says it's pronounced sechevit oh sechevit like french oh, oh, oh. On la du fromage. okay did i do that right i don't know Real to cast, tell me, <laughs> tell me if I did that right or if I sounded like ridiculous. I probably a little bit of both. <laughs> um, so this is this is like this is the top coat. Like for me, it's the top coat. Now I don't spend no money on my colors, right? Like they're all all my colors are either the clean color. You sound way more German than French, but hey, we'll say you're Swiss. Ah, perfect. There we go. Good compromise. I'd rather be Swiss anyway than, uh, <laughs> wait, that's mean. Stop it, Karen. That's mean. I love you guys, um, my German and my French um, followers. I love you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, so, um, <laughs> so uh, this one, this is really the top coat, right? Like, none of the others work as good. Now, I use this cheap, cheap. Clean color polishes, most of my polishes are either that or I got them out of the bargain bin somewhere or they were a gift. Like, um, all of, most of my polishes that are actually expensive were gifts, right? For Christmas or things like that, birthdays. So, where I do spend my money, though, is good base coats and good top coats. So, this stuff is like 10 bucks a bottle at the cheapest. And you're like, holy crap, Karen, that is freaking ridiculous. You know what, though, it's worth it. Because you can have a really nice top coat and base coat, and then you can get away with having the awful bargain bin polishes. Frenchy hater. <laughs> I don't hate, I don't hate French. It's just, it's so easy to make fun of. Um, so easy to make fun of. Stop it. Y'all get me in trouble. I'm gonna get me in trouble. Y'all didn't do anything. I get me in trouble. Okay. This is why streaming is dangerous, y'all, because you just say things and like in a in a script, like in a scripted YouTube video, I would actually have to not only write it down and say it to the camera, but then have to edit myself and so I could easily like cut the line. Mm-mm, not in a stream. Okay. This is why streamers get in so much trouble compared to like YouTubers. <laughs> Cause you just say stuff. Forget that you're not just hanging out with friends. I mean, I kind of am. Like most of the people that actually come um come the, the shows like live like you guys like I actually have relationship with you and you are friends so you know <laughs> I forget I forget uh because -huh. I'm just chatting with my friend you know friends Cass and Kendra and Kai and you guys right now so yeah I spend my money on my top coats and base coats so this like ten dollars a bottle I don't think the SE Million Nails is too expensive I don't remember and then Oont, again, it's another like $10 a bottle at the cheapest. Whereas like the colors are like a dollar. <laughs> but I, you have a lot more colors, right? Like you have a lot more colors, you know, so that you can have variety than you would have of um, base coats and top coats. It's always all the same, all the same base coats and top coats. Okay, so this is it. Like this is the magic. And I put it on super, super thick. I you probably couldn't tell on camera, but I was putting it on super, super thick. So I kind of get it everywhere a little bit and I always have to clean up at this step. So we're actually gonna, we're actually gonna do a little pass around all the nails and underneath them. Just like this. To kind of get it off of the skin because it is kind of all over my skin. And you don't have to do this. Like I'm being kind of anal retentive, right? Because if it's on the skin and it's the top coat and it's not the color, like it's going to come right off when you shower. Like you're going to shower and it's that like those chunk, those chunkies that you got in your skin are going to come right off. Like you don't have to do this. I am just being like a little bit extra with this step. And y'all, we are almost done. We are almost done with this. 
what so what do you so what have, so what do y'all think like what have you do you feel like you learned a lot do you feel like you learned a lot i tried to condense basically my the basic manicure tips that i learned through practice and through youtube for like the past i don't know god how long have i been doing maybe four years i've been doing them total i learned a lot oh awesome laura i'm so glad I'm so glad. And you know, Laura, if you do start this um this journey and you start like just keeping a clear coat on, um keep me updated. I'm so curious how it how it will go for you because it really really benefited me and my nail health and stuff like that. My Amazon cart may be full of chichoba oil. Hey, you know when it comes to product, like actual products to buy, that's the thing. If you if you are like, god, I don't have any money, but I really want to buy some of this stuff that Karen talked about. Just get some jojoba oil. That is the the biggest thing in regard to nail health is keeping them hydrated. Because once they come out, like right, like once they once they come out of the finger, like the part that we can actually see, you know, they're dead. They're dead like hair. So that means that they need lots of love and care and lots of moisturizing. The same exact way that hair does, right? Like you have to be really particular about the level of oil that exists in your hair for the same reason, because it's not really alive anymore once it comes out your skull, right? You know, it's only really alive right down at the root, exactly the same with your fingernails. So I'll let you know, I'm really hard on my hands, especially with my job. Yeah, um, I am, the, that is, I guess, another point that I could make. I am very blessed to have like a very typical, like, office job you know i i'm i'm using a mouse and keyboard i'm on the phone you know like all day so it's pretty easy for me like i break my nails like these are the types of things that break my nails doing dishes break my nails doing dishes i break my nails opening the kitty litter box to to fill up the kitty litter because those things are freaking heavy as hell you know, I break my nails. Um, <laughs> I'm, I can be clumsy sometimes in the mornings. I'll break my nails like rounding a corner, right? Rounding a corner in my boop, right against the door frame, boop, and I'll just break a nail. You know, those are the types of things that, that break, that, where I'll break my nails, right? I don't really, I don't really have to worry about it when I'm working, right? Like I'm not going to break my nail at work unless I'm being like super careless. Like I don't, I don't even know. So I'm lucky in that regard. But I think that if you have, if you keep them short, you can still like use a lot of these same tips and just like file them way down. Like, like don't let them get past the finger the way that I do, right? And if you are in the short nail club, uh, Kelly Marissa, out of those channels that I linked earlier, Kelly Marissa is what I would recommend taking a look at. She has short nails and they are very nice and very healthy and she does beautiful manicures and she does nail art sometimes um, and she has very short nails so you know it is totally possible you don't have to have you know um uh, christine simply nailogical length nails to have beautiful looking manicures because kelly marissa does it just fine with short little stubs so i'm just waiting for the top coat to fully dry it doesn't take very long, just a few minutes. Like, it's probably already dry now. I'm just giving it some extra time before we do the final step. So doing a manicure, like, really punishes your nails a lot. Like, we, we scraped them with our metal thing because we did, like, this, right, with the cuticle softener. We put acetone all over them to get the old polish off. Um, you know, we, we put, we put, we had metal tools that we <laughs> scraped all across them right? Like all kinds of nasty, horrible things. We did all kinds of nasty, horrible things to our nails. So, um, so <laughs> I was waiting until it happened again, since we're almost done. I think we reached five of the, you shouldn't do this. Don't need to do this, but <laughs> oh, Cass. oh God, how many times about so many things. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm so bad with that. I'm so bad with that. <laughs> anyway, um, we were, we were really hard on our nails. Doing a manicure is really hard on our nails. So as our final step, we're going to circle back to the beginning and we're going to put 
some jojoba oil, but okay, before that, sure. Thank you, Lunar. I actually have not been drinking my water or my Powerade um, during this stream because I've been doing the stuff with my hands with my nails, so thank you very much. Thanks for the reminder. <clears throat> okay. I think that's probably pretty dry. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tap them and see. Yeah, that feels that feels really dry. And whenever you do your top coat, they're gonna feel like so smooth. Like, oh it feels like it just feels good. Like it feels good to like touch the nails. I know that sounds so weird. But um, but if you guys do your nails, if you start doing your nails, you will feel it too. What we're gonna do next is apply some jojoba oil. I'm just gonna do like a little dot and we're just gonna rub it across all of them like that. And it is gonna make it look super shiny on camera. <laughs> so they're gonna look a little bit weird, but that's the finished manicure. And this will soak in over a few minutes, right? It doesn't take long. Um. But you just want that like all over up in the nails. And what's so good, so the reason why we use jojoba oil for this for this final step is because it's one of the few oils, few natural oils that exists that is incredibly like at the molecular level, it's incredibly similar to the natural oils that appear on human hands. And so what that means is that it can kind of worm its way through the skin underneath to the nail itself, right? So it's actually going to hydrate the entire like dead nail plate because it's molecularly similar to like the human, to the oils that are on human hands. So your nails are going to suck that up, right? So you might think, if you think like, oh, any oil is going to work, right? Like I'll just use olive oil because I've got that in abundance. And a lot of people do use olive oil for skincare. But even though olive oil will hydrate your hands just fine, it's not similar enough to, to the oils that your hands naturally produce for your nails to absorb it. And that's what we want, right? We just punished our nails a lot with all the stuff that we did to it. And we want to give them a chance to recover um, so that they can get really hydrated and get really healthy. And I recommend um, using some jojoba oil basically every day, right? Like make it part of your routine. Um, you know, either in your nighttime routine before you're going to bed, or maybe in your morning routine when you get up, you know, whatever makes sense for your hygiene routine, adding it in the morning or in the evening, um, I, I really recommend it. Uh, I looked up Jojoba because I was curious. Oh, okay. I found out on the wiki that it was discovered when people needed a substitute for whale oil after it was banned in the U.S. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know anything about whale oil except that it's banned. <laughs> so that is so interesting. Um, but yeah, apparently at the at the molecular level, like it's it's almost indistinguishable from the oils that your hands produce. So that's why it works so well when it comes to nail care compared to other oils. And this is also why I recommend just getting jojoba oil instead of trying to get nail oil, because nail oils are typically like, they're typically like a, a mixture, right? So they're typically like, um, you know, some kind of like synthetic oil blend plus some jojoba oil. And so like why, when you can just get straight up jojoba oil for like way cheaper, you know what I mean? Now, some of these nail oils, like they have beautiful scents and things like that. And they also come in applicators, um, which I have some applicators, but I gave up using them because it's like a hassle to refill them. I hate doing it. So I just gave up. You can get refillable applicators. So if you want one of those fancy applicators and just fill it with your jojoba oil, but it's not necessary. Like you get, you get so much, like, I don't, I don't know if y'all can see it, but like, this is like where it is. And I got this bottle like a year and a half ago. Maybe it was two years ago. I don't know only ever bought so in the four years i've been doing my nails this is the second bottle of jojoba oil i've ever bought They'll, it lasts forever it lasts forever right so like why would i buy nail oil when jojoba oil works better okay this is what the finished manicure looks like Let me get the camera there we go so you know it's not perfect but like y'all probably can't even see the mistakes on camera come on focus 
Let me get rid of maybe the mat because the mat has words on it. I wonder if it's zeroing in on that. Go away. They tried to. Get out the way, other things. Yeah, well, it doesn't want to focus that close. There we go. So this is what the manicure looks like. Y'all probably can't even see the mistakes, right? And you're even that close. So that's, that's it. That's like my main nail tips, right? That's my main uh, nail tips. So let me know in the chat what other nail questions y'all have. Um, see if I can answer any more. And while y'all are doing that, I'm gonna fix, gonna fix my camera back, and we are gonna do, you know, our kind of closing activity. We're gonna do our little poke. And also, let me know, like, if y'all are interested in also seeing like some nail art, right? Because this was really just a very basic manicure, but there are other like various tips that you can use when you're doing like nail art. Um, that's like a whole, like that's like a whole different beast, right? Let's do this and make sure my camera is good. No camera. Okay, my face is back on the good camera. <laughs> it was so weird. Y'all, it was so weird seeing my face on like the old, um, the old bad camera. <laughs> After not using it for so long, I have to say, like I have to say that was the strangest. Um, <sighs> I'm so glad I got this camera. Used for streaming. Okay. Okay. But we're going to pull up. Okay. I'm over here. Alrighty. Alrighty. How am I looking? Looking a little bit yellow. Let's make these back. Okay. Nice and pink. All right. So let's do some Pokemon meme. All right. So here's where we are. Here's where we are with the meme. Okay, so we've got some more fun Pokemon today. The first one that we are going to look at, let's pull up our website that we like to use for this. We are going to look at the um, Gen 7 ground type. So ground Gen 7, and let's go look at our choices. Oh, we do want smart table, but I want to do National Dex number here. Let's search. Okay. So this one we can do Mudbray or its evolution, and we can do or we can do Sandygast or its evolution. So here's the way I'm gonna do it. So I really do like Sandygast a lot. Um, but we're actually gonna probably we're gonna put him in ghost. So a little spoiler for the next one. You'll see when we have the other ones. So what that means is we're left with Mudbray for this one, because remember we're not doing any repeats, right? We're not doing that. Um, so let's take a look at Mudbray. Come over here. Here we go. Mudbray. So here's what he looks like. Scroll down a little so y'all can see him. He is little weird looking donkey Pokemon. <laughs> I think he's really cute. Um, a lot of people made fun of him whenever he was first released for whatever reason. I don't know. I like him. I think he's really neato. So let's look at his entries. The mud stuck to Mudbray's hooves enhances its grip and its powerful running gait. It is a stubborn, individualistic disposition, eating dirt, making mud, and playing in the mire, all form part of its daily routine. Those are the two Pokedex entries. I think I scrolled up too high. Oh, well, that's fine. I read them out loud, so it's all good. Okay, come here, Photoshop. So that is the ground type for Gen 7 right there. Come on. My mouse is not in its normal spot, so it's not like clicking properly. I think it's too far away from its USB. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so Mudbray. Um, so the next one we're going to look at, let me show you what the other choices are for Ghost. So if we come and do the Ghost ones for this generation, we get Sandy Gas, like I just mentioned, but I'm not like super into these other ones, right? Like these are all 
these are all um, legendary, so we're not going to pick those, right? But we could do we could do Del Missy, not super into it. Mimikyu, I think, is like the the typical choice for this, but I'm not super into Mimikyu. So it's either really like, um, I don't even know how to pronounce this guy. Um, Desidui, maybe, um, or, or Orikoro or Sandy Gast. You know, Sandy Gast is the best one. Oh, Cass, are you a, are you a Mimikyu? Are you a Mimikyu lover? <laughs> not super into it, sorry. Um... He's a Pikachu copycat. Mimikyu is the cutest. I think a lot of people would agree with you. I'm I'm going to be the outlier, though, and say your opinion is wrong. Um, Mimikyu is a pretender and a copycat, and uh, we do not stand. All right, so we pick Sandy Gast for ghost. Uh, I love the beach, right? I've always lived near the beach. So the idea of, like, a sandcastle Pokemon is super appealing to me. So let's look at his entries. Born from a sand mound playfully built by a child, this Pokemon embodies the grudges of the departed. It takes control of anyone who puts a hand in its mouth, and, and so it adds to the accumulation of its sand mound body. Whoa, shit, that's scary. Hell yeah, Lunar, Eevee is the best Pokemon. We haven't added, we haven't added Eevee yet to our meme, but, um, but rest assured, rest assured, he, uh, he will make an appearance at some point on here. So there's Sandy Gast right there. Gen 7 Ghost Pokemon. Okay. So the next one we're going to look at, let's look at another ghost. We're going to do the ghost for Gen 6, though. So the ghost choices for Gen 6 is the Honedge line or Phantump or Pumpkaboo. I think these are really great choices, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see, Lunar. Hold that thought. Some, at some point, we'll get to the, my fire preferences. I got things to say about that. Um, but my, my favorite of these Pokemon is honestly Dublate. I think he is so cool. He's like kind of pink, right? Let, let me show y'all what he looks like. And I think the idea of a sword Pokemon is really neat. Like, look at him. He's like two, he's like two freaky swords with like pink tassels. It's just so neat. And I think this line is so cool. Like a lot of people don't like the non-animal Pokemon. And sometimes I agree. Don't agree though for Dublade and the Hone Edge line. I think they are so cool. So, okay. So here's entry, his entry. When Hone Edge evolves, it divides into two swords, which cooperate via telepathy to coordinate attacks and slash their enemies to ribbons. I mean, who, who doesn't, who doesn't like that? The complex attack patterns of its two swords are unstoppable, even for an opponent greatly accomplished its sword play. So it's like literally the sword bro Pokemon, <laughs> right? Like he's the sword bro Pokemon. Okay, so here we go. Dublade for the ghost for Gen 6. Okay, we're going to do one. We're going to do, let's see. Oh, no, two more. We're gonna do two more. So let's go look at the steel types because we can see that he is also steel. Um, let's go see what the other steel types are for this generation. I like the ice cream Pokemon almost out of spite because everyone was so mad about it. True, everyone was so mad about that ice cream Pokemon. Oh my god. Oh my god. People way overreacted about the freaking ice cream Pokemon. Um, I'm not super in love with the ice cream Pokemon. He's okay. Uh, but uh, holy crap, the hate that it got, unwarranted. Unwarranted. Okay, that being said, so we've got the Hone Edge line again for steel types, or we've got Klefki. Y'all, Klefki's another, another one. Steel types do this a lot, I feel like. Klefki's another one. Not an animal Pokemon, but like, look at him. Like, he's so cool, like a key ring Pokemon. The hell, neato. Um, and let's go look at his entry. These, oh, there we go. These key collectors threaten any attackers by fiercely jingling their keys at them. Like, imagine, imagine, I am trying to scare you, jingle, 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 like, like a toddler. <laughs> Only instead of excited, you're supposed to get scared. It never lets go of a key that it likes, so people give it, it keys to vaults and safes as a way to prevent crime. So useful, very useful as well. So, hey, Mochi. Um, so glad to see you're still here. Okay, so there we go. He's our steel one. Okay, and we're gonna do one more. We're actually gonna, we're gonna change gears just a little bit and look at the uh, electric type types for Gen 3. Electric types for Gen 3. Okay, so our choices here is the Electric Line, Plusle, or Minun. So what y'all will notice 
is I'm real picky when it comes to the Pikachu-like Pokemon. I love Pikachu, and there's another one that I really like that we will get to. But typically, I'm not super into them. So my choice here is going to be Electrike. That's my favorite of the Electrics for Gen 3. So let's take a look at him. I think he looks like a little green puppy. Okay, he looks like a little green puppy. I want him to sit in my lap. So his entries. Electrike stores electricity in its long body hair. This Pokemon stimulates its leg muscles with electric charges. These jolts of power give its legs explosive acceleration performance. So he go fast. Electrike runs faster than any human I can follow. The friction from running it's converted, is converted into electricity, which is then stored in the Pokemon's fur. So he runs fast, he runs so fast, he make electricity. How awesome is that? Okay, so let's add him to my electric. Oh, I already had him revealed. Oops. <laughs> well, there he is. Electrike. Okay, so we filled this out a little bit more. Um, we're, we're gonna see like more and more possible choices. You can definitely see from looking at this because I've kind of built it up, right? As there's more and more choices. Uh, Gen six is like bereft. Like there, there is no, there's like so few Pokemon, new Pokemon that were introduced in this generation. Um, okay, so th that's, uh, that's the Pokemon for this time. We'll do a few more next time. Uh, we will eventually finish this. At some point we will finish all of this and you will see all of my favorite Pokemon. Okay, so let's go back. Go back to there we go. Okay, so um, thank you everybody so much for joining me. Um, I was so I was so happy to share um, all of my manicure tips with you guys. This is something that has been asked to me since I very first started making videos. It's it's the probably the the most frequently not role play related question that I get. So really excited to share it with you guys. Um, I hope that that, uh, that cleared up a lot of questions that you guys had. I know I've explained some of this stuff before, like in Discord chats or whatever, but now it's all in one place that I can send people to. So I'm really, really excited about that. So thank you for coming with me on this journey. Um, here's all the places that you can find me, right? It's chill time that we do at the end. Okay, so we stream twice a week. So that's on Thursdays, which is artistic license, um, which is my whatever the hell I want stream. It's a variety. It's it's experimental. You know, sometimes th sometimes we do things and they go awesome. Sometimes not so much, right? Because it's whatever we feel like. On Saturdays is interstage window, which that's Saturdays at noon Eastern. And that is my conversations with my friends stream. So Landon is typically my co-host for that. And sometimes we have guests and um, on all of that fun stuff. Sometimes the, the conversations are a little bit, you know, more lighthearted. Sometimes they're more serious. But I truly believe that for all of us to become better role players, we need more opinions out there than just mine. Right. So that's a place on on my channel where I'm specifically getting other people's opinions and, and showing them to you guys, because I think that just because something works for me doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. So there you go. Number six, Cass. <laughs> so that's a chance for others to share also their expertise when it comes to role play so that you guys can find exactly what works for you. And then, of course, we have Spare Room. That's my YouTube show. Uh, you can find that every Wednesday. At, uh, it goes up at 2 p.m. Eastern, and that is scripted, right? So that's my scripted show where it's like shorter videos, more discrete, specific topics. Um, so that's all the places that you can find me for my videos. Also, I post on Twitter. My Twitter is It's Karen Terry. That is um, a lot of advertisements, but also sometimes there's hot takes and other fun things on there. So if that interests you, go follow my Twitter. Uh, also down below is my Discord server. So you can join the Discord server, especially if you're interested in coming on the interstage window streams, I recommend getting in the Discord server. I also have notifications that go up there because as we know, YouTube and Twitch notifications, not the most reliable. So you can get your notifications from Discord, much more reliable because I actually control them. So if the bot breaks, I can go fix it. And um, and then, of course, if you want to support me, there's lots of ways to do that. Uh, all of the ways through Twitch that you that are typical, like um, you can give a tip that's down below in the in the Twitch about um, subscribe bits. And I have a Patreon as well. So if you're interested, that's all it's all below in the about of my Twitch. OK, um, that's it. That's all. That's the stream. Thank you guys so much for coming. And um, and I will see you all on Saturday for Interstage Window. OK, 